We were married on the longest day of the year, June 21st, which is actually the shortest day of the year for those of you who are in Australia. The year was 1969, and it was in the latter part of July, shortly after a man actually set foot on the moon, that I first met Grammy. For four years, I had gone to college with two individuals that became my closest friends. One of them was named Wolfgang, who we called Wolf, and the other guy's name was Tom, who I called Thomas when I was frustrated with him. I was a couple years older than them because I didn't start to go to college right after I graduated from high school. I went to work as a draftsman. I had already graduated from college by the time that man first set foot on the moon in, in July of 69. Wolf and Tom were both dating girls that they would eventually marry right after college. I, on the other hand, was dating a girl that I absolutely knew I wasn't going to marry. The strange thing was that Marie, Wolf's future wife, Pat, Tom's future wife, and Liz, Grammy to you, ultimately my future wife, all hung out together. But strangely enough, I'd never met Liz. So the situation was that when it was time to go to a wedding rehearsal for Wolf's wedding, it was actually the first time that I had ever met Liz, who happens to be your grandmother. The church where Wolf and Marie were getting married was about 15 miles outside of Princeton, New Jersey. It was a fairly rural community at the time. Wolf, Tom, and I were all employed and had contracts for the upcoming school year. The Vietnam War was peaking out and it was very easy for us to get work as science teachers in high school. Well now, let's get to the nitty gritty of this meeting. I pulled up in a car that was kind of unique. I had built this car between my sophomore and junior year in college. I bought a fiberglass body and put it on a Volkswagen chassis. It drove like it was on rails. I ended up selling it in order to get married and go on our honeymoon. When I got to the church, it was a little bit early and the church was actually locked up. And lo and behold, there was a person sitting on the church steps waiting for the church to be unlocked. The two things that I remember distinctly about her was that she had blonde hair that was stick straight. And in those days, the girls would actually iron their hair to make their hair very straight. Her hair was long. It went down to about the center of her back. But she was bald. No, she wasn't. I just like to say that because I open a door like that. And when I do, I just have to walk through it when it's that big an opening. Since you're so young and you have to be taught everything, I'm going to tell you that that is a joke. It's probably the first joke that you'll hear in your life. And you'll remember it when you look at your grandmother and think, oh my goodness, she was bald? Your dad, Uncle David, and I always tell jokes to one another ever since they were children. It's like adding spice to food. It just makes it a little bit better and life becomes a little bit easier to swallow. I got out of the car and looked at her closely and I saw that her eyes were absolutely stunning. And when I did a portrait of her, I tried to capture that. There was, there was a kindness and a sweetness in her eyes. Yes, my precious one, I still get choked up just thinking about what a lovely human being your grandmother has been throughout my entire lifetime. What is the secret to a long marriage? Long marriage requires three individuals the man, the woman, and Jesus Christ. Life is challenging enough that you need to be able to come home to your best friend who loves you, understands you, and is easily forgiving of your faults and the challenges that you have in your own life. The next two things are not only important in a good marriage, but also very important to have a good life. Don't take one another for granted. Be appreciative for everything. Say thank you and please. Being polite and appreciative shows other people that you are a child of God. 
pray over your obstacles and your problems and never go to bed angry with one another. I can't tell you honestly that I've always followed that last part because I've made a tremendous number of mistakes. But these next five words have altered my life. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Or these nine words, please forgive me. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And mean it with your whole heart. Always remember, you are special. But then again, so is everybody else. So learn to be humble. It'll make you more lovable. And before we got married, we asked each other, can you see yourself growing old together with me? We have lived it out. It's always been 50-50. We work together and we dream together. Through it all, we loved each other. And those 54 years seem like yesterday. Never allow loneliness to crowd your judgment. Write down a list of things that you want in the person that you'll live with for the rest of your life. And give it to God. God knows who's right for you. He will give you the desire of your heart. Always remember, my little Maisie, that Jesus has written your name in his palms. Your family loves you. Be blessed always. God bless you.